Hey guys, this is Miss Trust Claire. Um, you are going to be watching a screencast on the mole, but before you even get started, there are some supplies you need to get. Make sure you have something to write on for notes, write with for notes. Also get your calculator, periodic table, and your mole dominoes. If you don't have those, press pause, go get those supplies, and then start the screencast again. So today we are going to be talking about the mole, and I'm not talking about the rodent or the thing that's growing on your arm. I'm talking actually about a counting unit used in chemistry. So as we know, chemistry is a subject of numbers, and it deals with particles, which are atoms, molecules, formula units. But these things are so small, we can't individually count each one of them. So we have a counting unit called the mole that Avogadro came up with that allows us to count how many atoms, molecules, and formula units there are in a substance. So before we even get started, let's um, just review some counting units hopefully that you are familiar with. So the pair. When I say pair, what number comes to your mind? Not the fruit. I'm actually talking about a pair and a number. So what number? Pair two. Okay. Dozen. When I say dozen, hopefully you think of the number 12. How about this one? Baker's dozen. Now this may be more difficult for some of you if you don't know this um, term, but a baker's dozen, you should have 13. That brings us to the mole, the counting unit. One mole, so when I say one mole, what should come to your mind is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. Again, when I'm talking about particles, I'm talking about atoms, molecules, and formula units. You need to memorize that, just like you have pair, dozen, baker's dozen memorized. So let's review. When I say pair, you say two. When I say dozen, you say 12. When I say baker's dozen, you say 13. Here we go. When I say mole, you say, say it loud, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, now that we have a grasp on that, we are going to start talking about conversions. But before we can even do the conversions between mass and moles and particles, you need to know how to calculate molar mass. Molar mass is the mass of one, uh, I'm sorry, the molar mass is the mass of one mole of a substance. So to calculate that, for instance, we have what is the molar mass of methane? You have to first look at the individual atoms that make up the uh, um, substance. So for carbon, there's one atom of carbon, and its mass off the periodic table is 12.01. Then we have hydrogen, looking at the formula, CH4, it shows us there are four atoms of hydrogen. And the mass of hydrogen off the periodic table is 1.01. .01. You get those masses and add them together, you get the total mass of the substance, or the total mass of methane in this case, which is 16.05 grams. So one mole of methane equals 16.05 grams. Now what you're going to see at the bottom of the slide is a your turn. I expect you to write down the question and then answer it. Make sure you show all of your work and you will bring those to class tomorrow. So you can hit pause now and work on it or write down the question and work on it later. But please bring them to class tomorrow. This brings us to percent composition. This um, is a way that we can practice using um, molar mass. So what is the percent carbon in methane? Well, percent composition, you're going, like in any percent, you take the part over the whole times 100. So we already calculated the molar mass in the previous slide, and we determined that it was 16.05 grams for every one mole of methane. You also calculated the total mass of the carbon in methane, and that was 12.01 grams. So you're going to take the part, which is 12.01, over the whole, 16.05, and get your answer, and then multiply it by 100, which is 74.83%. Now what? It's your turn. Write this down. What is the percent hydrogen in methane? Show your work. Bring your answer tomorrow. Now moving on to conversions. Now that you understand how to calculate molar mass, we can start converting between mass and mole and mole to mass. So here's an example problem. We have how many moles uh, is 36.04 grams of water. 
first I figured out the molar mass because I know I'm going to get, have to get rid of grams as a unit. To do that, I figure out the molar mass of water, and it's 18.02 grams. Then I have my dominoes out. My given domino is going to be in grams, so my matching domino better be grams to moles. I then turn my domino counterclockwise, fill in the numbers, cancel out the units, punch it into my calculator, and I should get two moles of water. Ready? Now it's your turn. Write down the problem. Now you have to actually do it opposite. You're starting with moles, and I want you to get to mass. Please make sure you show your work. Now we're going to convert between moles and particles. Okay, so how many molecules are in 6.9 moles of water? Remember that one mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. So you start with your dominoes. You have a given domino, and that is in moles. Somehow I have to get from moles to molecules. So the next domino, mole to molecules, turn it counterclockwise, plug in the numbers, cancel out the units, plug it into my calculator using parentheses so I can ensure that I get the correct answer, and I end up with 4.15 times 10 to the 24th molecules of water. Now using this concept, it is your turn. Now, I want you to calculate how many moles are in 6.25 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of oxygen. Now, from here, we can go from mass to particles or particles to mass. So the problem here is how many molecules are in 36.04 grams of water? Things you need to know. You need to know the molar mass of water, 18.02 grams. You need to remember that one mole of the substance is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. So right now, what I want you to do, take out your dominoes. Lay them out in front of you. Before I even show you, try and lay out your dominoes. Hit pause while you're doing that. Then when you come back, you should have this set up. Given is in grams, then a gram to mole domino, and mole to molecules. Turn them counterclockwise. Plug in the numbers, cancel out the units. Using your calculator, put in the numbers using parentheses so to ensure the right answer, and you should get 1.2 times 10 to the 24th molecules. You may want to practice putting that into your calculator to make sure that you get the same answer as me. Then, guess what? It's your turn. Here you go. How many grams of sulfur are in 1.8? times 10 to the 24th sulfur atoms. This brings us to Mole Island. It's a mole in the Caribbean, don't you know? I'm just kidding. This is just a visualization um, to help you with your conversions. We have Adam Island on the bottom, then Mole Island, then Graham Island. Technically, Adam Island should be Particle Island. So it could be atoms, molecules, formula units. Right here, if you're going from Adam Island to Graham Island, it shows you the conversion, the setup, what's on top, what goes on bottom, and then the next setup, what goes on top, what goes on bottom, so you can cancel out your units and get to the right one. So grams to Adam Island, same thing, gives you what your conversion should be so you can get to the proper unit. Now, you can't just go from atoms straight to grams or grams straight to atoms. You need to stop at Mole Island first, just like we did when we did our conversions from milligrams to kilograms. You always had to stop at the basic unit first and then convert to kilograms. Same here. You always need to stop at Mole Island first to get your answer. Okay, well, that concludes the screencast for tonight. If you have any questions, I better see you first thing tomorrow morning before class begins. Have a good night.